Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Post Cologne. Today I'm gonna give you seven Middle Eastern and indie fragrances that I wore this week. So let's jump into it. All right, so we are gonna switch things up a little bit. I haven't done one of these videos in quite a while and I just felt we were due for a nice weekly rotation video. So this week I got five Middle Eastern fragrances and two indie fragrances that I wore and I just wanna to talk to you guys about them. So links are gonna be down in the description if you decide you wanna check any of these out and let's quit screwing around and let's get into it. All right, so kicking things off last Saturday, I reached for a fragrance that I actually just dropped a full review on and I was wearing it that day I was filming it because that's what I do when I film a review. And that is Latafa's Jasur. Now this fragrance is a brand new release from the Latafa line. And this one is an interesting one. This one has got that kind of stronger with you sort of vibe, a little less sweet, but it definitely has those warm spicy aspects to it. Opens with this really nice juicy fruity style of opening mixed with some warm spice, some cinnamon, some cardamom. And then it has some nice aromatics that are mixed in the mid. So you get some lavender that comes through, a little bit of geranium. So it gives it this like bright, uplifting sort of feel with some nice fruity sweetness mixed in with some nice warm edges in that opening. So it's a really nice opening, has that sweetness there balanced off against that warm spice. But as this gets towards the dry down, you lose some of that sweetness from that, that fruity accord that comes through. It's replaced a little bit more with some tonka, a little bit of a dusty tonka that's there. And it moves into these nice rich woods, some leather with those warm spices there. And it turns into a really kind of deep, rich, warm style of fragrance with just a little hint of sweetness around the edges. Like I said, has that stronger with you style of vibe, like the absolutely a little bit of a nuttiness coming from that tonka. Not quite there. I don't think this is a, it might be a twist of those fragrances, not a direct clone. And it is a little less sweet than the stronger with you style of fragrances. So it could be a less sweet flanker within that family is kind of the best way I'd put it. Performance on this was pretty good. I get about seven hours worth of longevity and it does project out pretty good for about two hours before it does settle back in. If you're into that, that style of stronger with you style of DNA, but you're looking for something a little less sweet, this might be the ticket for you. That's Latafa's Jasur. Moving right along to last Sunday, we're going with Paris Corners Touf. Now, I will be the first to admit, I did an unboxing of this about a week or two ago, and I was kind of just meh about this fragrance when I had it on the test strip, but like I said, I always try this on skin, give it a full chance, and let me tell you, I've changed my mind about this one. This one actually on skin is quite delightful. This one opens up very strong. It's a very bold, aggressive style of saffrony leather that comes through, a little bit of a salty leather that comes through. So it, it definitely has that aggressive, bold, masculine style of opening to this. But on skin, as this kind of settles down a little bit, these sweet accords come through to get this nice tonka, this caramel, this vanillic accord that mixes in with that leather, with that saffron, and it really balances things off quite nicely. So it still maintains that bold masculinity. It is toned down from that opening and it is just kind of softened up by that sweet accord that comes through with that tonka, with that caramel and vanilla style of sweetness that's there. And it really smooths out to a really nice, elegant, gentlemanly, kind of mysterious style of fragrance and I really like this one. The dry down on this one is where the money's at. Like I said, the, the opening is kind of aggressive so don't judge this fragrance based on that opening because once it does settle down and once you get into that dry down, this is really quite beautiful. This is supposed to be a clone or a twist of YSL's Baby Cat or Resendo Mato number no. five, I believe. Not familiar with those two fragrances, but if you're curious, that's what a lot of people are saying. Really great performance off this one. I got eight, 10 hours off skin, no problem. I got some of my clothing and I had to wash that shirt because I was smelling it for days after. So performance on this is beast mode, does project off really good for about two, three hours before it does settle back in. So like I said, uh, I, I always say in my, my unboxing videos, I have to get things on skin before I give them kind of a final verdict. And I did change my mind. I thought this was a boring fragrance, but on skin, the dry down in this, absolutely beautiful, really enjoying this one. So definitely worth checking out. That's Paris Corners. A tooth. Rolling into the work week, we kicked off Monday with Paris Corners Wayfair. Now, this is a clone inspired by of the Azaro Wanted by Night, and let me tell you, this gets you fairly close to that. Opens with a nice sweet mandarin, some warm spice with some cinnamon, a little touch of cumin that's in there, and some cypress. So it definitely has that Wanted by Night style of opening. It has that sweetness, that warm spice that's there, that cozy, inviting, yet flirty style of opening. Little hints of that incense just kind of wisp around the edges. That cypress comes forward, giving it that green, earthy, woody style of punch to it. And in the base, you get that cedar that comes through, that tobacco, giving it kind of that warm, 
earthy, masculine style of dry down, a little bit dry tobacco that's in there, you know, through and through. This is just a, a really nice alternative to that Wanted by Night style of DNA. Not as quite as deep, as rich, as robust as the Yazaro Wanted by Night. I find the tobacco doesn't come through as as high quality as the Azaro Wanted by Night, and they do miss the Cypress a little bit. I find the Cypress is a little tamed down in this one compared to the Azaro's Wanted by Night. I find that note in there is just one of the reasons I really enjoy that fragrance. But for a $25 alternative, I think this is absolutely fantastic. Get you about maybe 80% of the way to that Azaro Wanted by Night DNA. Performance on this is average. I get about five, six hours worth of longevity, and it does push off moderately for an hour and a half, maybe two hours before it does settle back in. But like I said, if you're looking to get that Azaro Wanted by Night style of DNA, but save yourself a few bucks, you might want to check this one out. That's Paris Corners Wayfair. Rolling into Tuesday, I reach for one of my favorite indie houses, and that's Hez Parfums Blue Dog. Now, this is one of their new releases for their fall lineup of fragrances. I've tried a whole bunch of different Hez Parfum fragrances, and they are absolutely beautiful. And Blue Dog, definitely no exception. This is an absolutely fantastic, fresh, clean, masculine style of fragrance. Nice balance of some rosemary, pink pepper, and citruses in the opening. Get this nice tonka that comes through, adding a little bit of additional sweetness, some lavender, lily of the valley, gives it that fresh, clean laundry, sort of a watery feel that comes through with this. And in the base, you get this nice, creamy style of sandalwood, little hints of some woody sweetness that comes through with that one. Some broxen, little hints of musk around the edges. Just a beautiful, gentlemanly, fresh shave, fresh white t-shirt style of fragrance. Doesn't have that shower jelly blue style of clean, fresh fragrance. It's more of kind of a, an aromatic with a little bit of sweetness mixed in there and a nice smoothness that works its way through with those woods. Beautiful fragrance, signature scent worthy for sure. And the performance on this is pretty good. Seven, eight hours worth of longevity and it does push off pretty good for about an hour and a half, two hours before it does settle back in. You can get samples of like two mil, five milliliter bottles of this at Hez Parfums. Like I said, links are gonna be down in the description to all these. I definitely think you should be exploring this fragrance line because they make some beauties. So that's Hez Parfums Blue Dog. Moving into Wednesday, it was a little bit of a warmer day here and we're running out of warm days here. So I decided this might be the last time I get to wear this one until the springtime. And that's Halaj Stellar Oud. Now this fragrance is a clone or an inspired by of the Order Parisia's Megamar. And let me tell you, this is a very sharp, salty, sweet, marine style of fragrance. And I really like this one. Atomizer on this, pressurized, absolutely beautiful as well. Yeah, like I said, this opens really, really salty. If you're not into salty fragrances, steer away from this one. But if you are, this one hits you in the taste buds. It's so salty. Has a nice balance of some sweetness there, so it's not overly aggressive. Has those green style of marine notes that's mixed in there. So just think of it like an algae seaweed on the beach style of fragrance, and you're just getting smashed in the face with a really sharp sea breeze, just filled with a punch of salt. But you still get some nice sweetness that comes through, that kind of tones things down. As you get towards the dry down, you get this kind of mossy green feel that comes through, this really nice dry, ambery, woody style of a chord that comes through. The sweetness still stays there. There's a little bit of citrus just gets kind of like liven things up and elevate things, giving it a little bit of additional sharpness. But in the dry down, you get this really dry, woody, like a baked beech wood style of scent accord coming through with that salt, with that marine note, additional green coming through. But again, balanced off with just enough sweetness to just kind of keep this contained, not to make it too aggressive, too marine, too funky, too green. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Like I said, if you're into salty marine style of fragrances with just a nice kiss of some sweetness, you definitely want to check this one out. And this one is a great performer. I get eight hours of longevity, no problem. And it does push off pretty good for the first two hours before it does settle back in. If you're into marine fragrances, you might want to check this one out. That's Halage. Stellar Oud. Moving into Thursday, I was in the mood for some vetiver, and so I reached for Rasasi's Fatan. Now, this is a clone or inspired by of the Terre de Hermes fragrance, and let me tell you, this is a just a gorgeous interpretation of that fragrance. Has those citruses, has that nice signature vetiver that's in there. Absolutely a beautiful fragrance. Grapefruit, bergamot, pink pepper in that opening. Nice, lively citrus, a little bit of a nose tickle spice that comes through, a little bit of a sharpness that's there. Then you get that vetiver that pushes forward, this, this grassy, earthy, almost dirty style of vetiver. Not to, It's more of a rooty style of vetiver than it is kind of a dirty style of vetiver. Mixing with some really nice cedar, a nice, fresh, spicy, airy style of cedar. 
Absolutely a beautiful mix of those citruses, those woods, and it's definitely gonna give you that Terre d'Hermes style of DNA. In the dry down, you get a little bit more of this benzoin amber that comes through. It adds some dryness to it, but it also adds some additional kind of vanillic sweetness that just kind of tones down that spice and that woody accord. So it's a little bit sweeter, a little bit less spicy than the Terre d'Hermes, but like I said, through and through, this is definitely an inspired by fragrance of that, and you're definitely gonna get that scent profile, but just a little touch sweeter and a little less spicy than the original. Performance on this is really good. I get about eight hours worth of longevity, and it does push off pretty good for the first two hours before it does settle back in. If you're familiar with the Terre d'Hermes style of fragrances, this is a great alternative. If you're looking to try and kind of dabble in some more vetiver forward fragrances, this would be a good start as well. That's for Saucy's. A ton. Finishing off the week on Friday, I decided to go back to the house of Hez Parfums with Hez Parfums Hurricane. Now, this fragrance is, is a lot of fun. This one is just a nice fruit cocktail worth of fruity notes in the opening. Passion fruit, pineapple, orange, and this really nice sweet red cherry style of note. I, I, a very realistic fruity notes that come through with this. It doesn't have like a synthetic vibe or like a sh sugary sweet sort of vibe. It just really like opening up a fresh fruit cocktail. And as this opens up a little bit, you get these nice boozy accords that come through that kind of warm it up and add a bit of an edge to it. So you get this warm rum and cognac that comes through. A little bit of a sparkling sort of watery gin that sits around the edges along with some Lily of the Valley that again adds to that wateriness, a little bit of a green touch to it. And this nice orange blossom adding some white floral sweetness to it to kind of accentuate those those fruity notes that come through. As you get towards the dry down, a little bit more woods come through. You get this nice creamy sandalwood, a little bit of some cedar that works through, little hints of some musk, but through and through, this is just like kind of a, a grown up fruit cocktail with that added boozy accord to it. Not overly boozy, but just enough to give it kind of that mature vibe, but it still has a fun, flirty, youthful style of nature going on to it. It's just like having a really good time at kind of a fancy lounge. That's the vibe I get from this one, and it's just a perfect Friday scent when you're just looking to start off your weekend and have a great time. Performance on this, pretty good. I get about six, seven hours worth of longevity, and it does push off fairly good for about an hour and a half, two hours before it does settle back in. Like I said, Hez Parfums on their website has samples of this, two mils, five mils, and full presentation bottles if you're interested. So again, links are down in the description. I highly suggest you check them out. They're a great indie house. I really enjoy their fragrances there, and it's great to support local indies when you can. So go check them out. That's Hez Parfums Hurricane. All right, so there you have it. That's my weekly rotation, but I wanna hear from you guys. What is one of your favorite fragrances that you wore this week? Comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. I love getting your different recommendations, your hidden gems, your different tastes and scent profiles. Appreciate you. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.